Welcome to Course in Miracles, uh, workbook lesson 44. And uh, God is the light in which I see. Let's just jump back to where we wrapped up last week. Workbook lesson 43, God is my source. So the very essence of what you are, the essence of self, soul, infinite spirit, is the extension of its source. Source being God, extension. So the sun, the extension is asleep, dreaming up a universe. This entire universe is in the dreamer's mind. Whereas the dreamer in God's mind, everything is in God's mind. So you cannot see, which is vision, spiritual vision, apart from God. And even what appears to be seeing is only because you exist in the light of God. And the light of God brings us into today's lesson. God is the light in which I see. God, in actual fact, is light. God is the light in which I abide. And I am the extension of God's light in which God abides. God is spirit and abides in me. I am spirit and I abide in God. Abide as in the eternal extension of source energy, light energy. God is light, pure light, pure energy. And so today we are continuing the idea that of, of lesson 43, God is your source. And you're adding another dimension to it. You cannot see in darkness. You cannot see in dream. What we call seeing in the dream is, in actual fact, not seeing. It's a dreamer experiencing the darkness of his mind as a projected universe and then body-mind activities. And you cannot make light, for you are light. You can extend light, but you can't make manifest light. So you can make darkness, meaning you can fall asleep and then think in the dream you see in it. But light, energy, essence reflects life and is therefore an aspect of creation, the extension. What is true creation? This universe is not creation. This universe is dream making. True, true creation is the extension, the eternal, ever-present, infinite extension of light, which is God. And you are that light. So darkness is dream state. Creation and darkness cannot coexist. So the truth is that creation is ever extending, is forever true. Darkness is what's happening in the dream is mind, the universe. And life and life, light must go together, bringing different aspects of creation. So different aspects, it's looking at it in different ways. So it's light extending. And that light is essence. The essence of that light is the very essence of life. So the essence of your life, is itself the soul. And that's why when the body-mind dissolves, appears to die, what's left is the essence. If that essence has not fully recognized itself, because it's encapsulated by a thought, a, a, a formless thought, spirit, the spirit returns to the first part of the dream, the dreaming mind. Essence is still the truth. When that spirit being, when that spirit essence realizes it's not true, it dissolves, leaving only the pure essence of light, life, to continue the extension of God in the Christ mind. So one of the greatest fallacies in spirituality is that there's something called enlightenment, that you, that you become enlightened or you become awakened. There's no such thing, really. What really happens is the, the closest you get to it is there's a recognition that this isn't real. And what is real is its essence. And so when that recognition of the essence by itself is cleared of all the distortions and preconceptions of the ego body mind, which seem to encapsulate it like like activities on a screen that seem to cover the screen, what happens? That essence returns to itself and adds to the self's awakening. We don't awaken. We realize we, the closest we get to is, oh, fuck, I don't exist. And the essence then returns and adds to the awakening of the mind. In order to see, you must recognize that light is within. Life is within, not without. That's a projection. You do not see outside yourself. The entire universe is in your mind, your dreaming mind. 
And even you, the body mind, is a localized activity of that self-same dreaming mind, which is your truth. You are the mind asleep. So you do not see outside yourself, nor there is there any equipment for seeing outside yourself. These eyes are projected. An essential part of this equipment is the light that makes seeing possible. The light, the very essence of you, is the essence in which you abide. And that's the life in which you abide. God is the life in which you abide. It is always with you because you are the extension of it. And that's what makes vision possible in every circumstance. So that exercise is about sinking into the heart, reaching that essence, the light within us. And the recognition that that's what's true. That's what's real. And everything else is untrue. And the most important part of this course is that when any thought comes up, when any trouble comes up, when any decision comes up, if you sink into that space and abide in that line, the clarity with what you need to then do or act or be will be so clear. The problem is your ego mind kicks back in and then starts fighting with you. And when you resist the decision, it's because your ego is resisting the decision. There's actually nothing to do, so everything's okay. The minute you think there's an agenda or that you need to do something better or you need to improve upon the formula or that you have any form of control, <laughs> that's when you get your illusionary butt kicked. Recognize this much. You've come this far. You've now spent a year or two or months with me getting into that non-dual space. You realize, you recognize at, in some level there's a recognition within you that you think is you recognize, but it's actually the essence of you's recognition. And so you're not completely and ignorant to this. You're not unholy, you know, wholly untrained. And so you are quite ready to learn the form of the exercise. And, and what's the form? Sink into the silent stillness. It's always, whenever you're struggling with a problem, don't try and fix it. Because you're trying to fix illusions. You can't improve illusions. You can't improve on yourself. Sink into the silence. The clarity will show you. The silent stillness is clarity. And if you could abide in gratitude for that clarity, sensations come and go. Celebrate them. If it's an unhappy thought, if it's a sad thought, if it's a good thought, it's all the same. Just watch them come and go. Don't, don't attach to any of that. And, of course, if those thoughts proliferate through your body-mind identity and you're getting a sensation or a feeling or an emotion, just watch it. Don't pay any attention. Why do you keep swallowing the poison of a thought that makes you feel unhappy or confused or troubled? Why do you give it any attention? By now you realize thoughts are poison. Even happy thoughts, because it's still nonsense. Silent stillness is, the, is your real, is the thought that you think with God. The real thinking that you think with God is silent stillness, abiding in silent stillness. The, the reason is very simple. While you practice this way, you will leave behind everything that you now believe. Because what are you? You're a culmination of thoughts based on values and beliefs, in which case you've formed an identification as to what you are based on what you think your source is. And that's the problem with with the illusion is that you've bought into that and you hang on to it. Properly, properly speaking, this is the release from hell. Release from hell, release from thoughts. Yet perceived through the ego's eyes, it's the loss of identity and the descent into hell. That's why the, it's so afraid to, to abide in the void, sink into the void, which the ego has made you convinced, has convinced you that it's the darkness. Sink into the darkness. No, sink in and you'll know the light. If you can stand aside from the ego ever so little, give it no attention, you will have no difficulty in recognizing that its opposition and its fears are meaningless, always tied to the future by dragging the past into the present and then projecting. You might find it helpful to remind yourself from time to time in time, but not in eternity, that to reach light, how you reach it, that you already are, is to escape from darkness, to escape your attention from darkness whatever you may believe to be the contrary. God is the light with which you see. God is the light that is you. You are the light. You're the extension of God's light. 
and you're attempting to reach him, in other words, reconnect with him, remember, become a member of that light consciously again. Consciously is the best you get to it because awareness, the conscious, the awareness, the light itself, the light of awareness dissolves human consciousness and awareness comes through. What is awareness? Silence, stillness, the abidance in total silence. And then it gives you the exercises and how to do the exercise, which of course you're all doing because you're so good and disciplined and you are being completely dedicated to doing God's will. I know this about you. And so this brings us to course lesson 45. God is the mind, capitalized M, with which I think. Why? Because you are an extension of God's mind. Mind and spirit are the same thing. Although the Course will say mind is the activating agent of spirit. So it's the part of spirit that's in movement. So imagine spirit is peace and mind is joy, movement. The movement of peace is joy. God is the joy with which I think. God is the love with which I think. The essence is peace. God is the mind with which I think. It's the only, and the only thought you have is the thought you have with God. What has God ever said? Nothing. Silent stillness. So what is it that you think when you're in God? Nothing. Silent stillness. But it's the extension of silent stillness. Silent stillness, peace. The extension of peace is joy. By now you know. Joy is peace and move in motion. Movement, the extension. Continuous extension of the eternal now. And so today's idea holds the key to what your real thoughts are. What's your real thoughts? Listen closely. Did you hear it? There's your real thought. That's why if you ask me a question, if I'm to give you an answer, I'm lying to you. If I'm truly centered in self and I was to allow this body-mind illusion to appear to answer you, at best, it's a concessionary echo for the voice for God. At best, it's a concession of the truth. Because what's answering this body-mind, what is it going to do in order to answer in truth? Be still and know I am. So your thoughts are not real. Not a single thought you've ever had about a place, a thing, a, 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 an event or an activity. People, places, things, and events. Not real. The thinker isn't real. The essence is silent. The continuous, incessant conversation you seem to be having with yourself or with some angel or some spirit guide or some Jesus or Buddha or Krishna or Ramana Maharashi is all in your head. It's ideas of ideas in the of the of the dreaming mind. Because I can promise you the Ramanas, the Jesus, they've awoken to self. They silent, never said a word. Love filtered through your egoic, filtered perceptions of separation will echo the truth. E everything is an echo for the voice for God. They are your thoughts. They are nothing that you think you think. Just there's nothing that you think is related to vision in any way. And that's why the practice of, of, of abidance, which is really abidance, meditation, which is not actually a physical practice. It's the very essence of what you are. Meditation is not a practice. What we think in the Western world, we're sitting there and meditating at home and we hold our hands like that. We don't know why because the statues do it. We all do it. And we've all given ourselves bullshit ideas as to why you must sit like that and sit in the lotus position and sit up straight so your kundalini can flow and face east or west or whichever hemisphere you're in. It's all nonsense. Life is meditation. The essence is meditation. The light is meditation. The self is meditation. What is meditation? Silent stillness and abidance in that which is. I am spirit and I abide in God. God is spirit and abides in me. There is no real relationship between what is real and what you think is real. Nothing that you think are your real thoughts, okay? Nothing that you think are your real thoughts resemble your real thoughts in any, in any aspect. Nothing that you think you are, are your real thoughts. Sorry, let me, let me say that again. Nothing that you think are your real thoughts resemble your real thoughts in any aspect because your real thoughts, silence. Nothing that you think you see, illusion, projection, bears any resemblance to what vision will show you. And so don't imagine what you're going to see. I was asked a question this week, you know, about special gifts. You know, if I become awakened, 
There is no I that becomes awakened. The awakening is the dissolving the body-mind identity. So uh, press button, uh, that question is irrelevant. But let's say you were to become awakened. Are you going to get psychic gifts? Are you going to be able to read minds and tell the future? There's no future. You can't read minds. There's only one mind. It's only one mind reading. And what are you reading? You're reading thoughts, the other people's thoughts. What are their thoughts? Illusions. Who's reading thoughts? Your illusion is reading the other illusion. You don't want these distractions. Psychic gifts, psychic powers or become distractions. Take it from someone who was distracted by his own psychic ability for the better half of 30 year, 35 years of his life. Let that stuff go. That's That magic stuff, magic is illusion. All magic is illusion. You either have magic or you have miracle. What is a miracle? Natural state of self. The abidance in real, the recognition none of this is real. What is magic? The entire world is magic. The whole thing, the whole universe. Different varying levels of, of what people believe are magic. What is a witch? Someone who is trying to manipulate illusions for their own benefit or for the benefit of others if they're an empath and they want to help others. What is a sorcerer? Male witch, what is a sorcerer? A source error. Sorcerer. <laughs> There's nothing magical about it. It is lost in translation. The real you. So you think with the mind of God. The real you thinks with the mind of God. And thinking is a little bit of a play on words because it's the real you extends the mind of God. Therefore, your shared thoughts, silent stillness, with God, silent stillness. He shares with you, silent stillness. So return to that silent stillness. They are the same thoughts because they are thought by the same mind. They are thought by God. And what does God think? The extension of life, the extension of love. That's the only thought you ever think. And so as a body-mind, don't you think that you can think the extension of love? Even as you try to extend love while you're a body-mind, you're just... You're just thinking you're projecting energy or something. Just abide in the silent stillness. And you realize it's already there. It's, it's everything you've ever been. It's everything you ever are and will be forever. To share is to make alike or to make one. So you really are one extending the love, the light, the essence, the peace, the joy of God. Nor do the thoughts you think with the mind of God leave your mind. Why? Because thoughts do not leave their source. So you, the dreamer, not you, the localization, except the essence of the localization is the dreamer, have never left God's mind, prodigal son, prodigal daughter. Therefore, your thoughts are in the mind of God, your real thoughts, silent stillness. As you are in God, never left. So tell me about your problems. Do you realize that the minute you go into a problem, you're back identifying with the body and you realize that everything in this world is to maximize the body's pleasures and minimize the body's suffering. And what does it do? It maximizes the body's suffering and minimizes the spirit awareness. Thoughts that you think you have are in your separate body mind's idea of itself. The real thought you have with God are in your mind as well, where he is. You are spirit, you abide in God, God is spirit, abides in you. As you are part of his mind, you're in the extension of his mind. So are your thoughts part of his mind? And again, what are your real thoughts? Your real thoughts are part of his mind, not your illusionary concepts about yourself. What should I do? Where should I go? What should I eat? Who should I love? When should I? Where, what? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it opens its mouth, it talks shit. That's it. If it opens its mouth and says something, it's already at best, no matter how loving its intention is, intention, tension, intention, it's out. But out, but out, om out, om, but I'm oming, om out. Silent still. It's so clear. Be still and know I am. It is the self same essence as God. Where then are your real thoughts? 
here, now, forever, the eternal now. And today we attempt to reach them as what? Separate body minds attempt to reach truth. What happens? As you close in, moth on the flame, as you reach the warmth, the energy, the light of life itself, what happens to the illusionary character? Dissolves. So what is really awakening? It's the final realization, oh, fuck, I don't exist. <laughs> Let's put this down. Let this essence energy return to itself. So we have to look for it in the mind. Why? Because we think it's in there. But where is it? It's always here now. Where's the temple? Here now. It must always be there. Can that not have left its source? Can never have left God. What is thought by the mind of God is eternal. Eternal. Eternity is here now forever. Eternity is here now forever. Being part of God's creation. The eternal extension of here now. The eternal extension of light. The eternal extension of peace. So what we do is, while we do these exercises, we deny the world in terms, in terms of we don't pay attention to the world in favor of truth, in favor of silent stillness. We will not let the beliefs of the world tell us what God would have us do is impossible because it's just the surrendering of this illusion to the light of eternal awareness. We will also try to understand what God would have us do. What would God have us do? I almost said shut the fuck up, but I won't say that because I'm spiritual and Jesus told me not to use that bad language this morning. <laughs> God says, do whatever the fuck you want to do, but just don't come bother me with your shit when it doesn't work out. Well, he didn't quite say that. That's just my <laughs> echo, <laughs> echo extension of his love. What he's really saying is, I will to will thy will, God. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to let go of this body-mind identity. And the fact that you think you can improve it, that you have self-worth issues, that there's something you can achieve, fix, or something you can save, or you can save yourself. How can you save yourself? You, what is the self you're going to save? The body-mind? You want freedom. or Freedom from or what? What freedom? What is freedom? Oh, the freedom to be free. What is that? What is the freedom to be free? To have your opinion, to have your vote, to have your, your say, to have your whatever you want done, to be validated. What wants to be validated? The ego, body, mind, illusion. Who wants to have a say? Who wants to be free? The body, mind wants to be free. What? Free from what? Who? Financial abundance, uh, sexual abundance, love abundance, joy abundance. We just want to be free. I want to have a house, a cottage at the sea and just, just like eat manna from heaven and just make love all day long and just, you know, surf, eat, pray, love. So you want, you want freedom for the illusion, for the character in the illusion. That's why I say we all want to know God, but we want to still be this. When you truly know God, this doesn't exist. It just, you realize what is true is the essence. And it is always the essence. It's the eternal extension. We will also try to understand that only what God would have us do is what we want to do. What would God have us do? Simple. Let go. Let God. Let go of this body-mind identity. Let go of the idea that you can do something. We will also try to remember. Remember when you read the word remember. See the word member. Become a member again in, of the extent, eternal extension. That we cannot fail in what he would have, he would have us do. Why? The dream's already over. This course tells you repeatedly, this dream is over. But why does it seem real? Because you haven't forgiven the dream, dreaming son of God. You haven't forgiven what you've done in the dream. And because you've objectified and projected it outwards, you blame the dream characters of your own dream for keeping you in bondage and that it's suppressing you. That's why I'm so, I, I just, I just want to shout out to the, the World Health Organization, which is really acronym World Health Organization. Thank you, World Health Organization. And the WEF, which is not wrestling, you know, the World Economic Forum. Thank you, you know, World Ego Forum. Because of your fuck up and because of your wanting to control and dominate and you want to live forever and, and, and decrease the population of the world because you want to survive forever. In 2020, you put out a virus which has given us the Christ 2020 vision. Thank you. Because we're awakening to self and we're realizing whether the emotion's good or bad or right or it's, this is just illusionary constructs. The self is always here now. 
What would God have us do? God would have us awaken to self and let go of our universal dream of nothingness. And we cannot fail because we're already awoken. We just have to now forgive the dream because to forgive is to forget. What is an unforgiven mind? A dreaming mind, this. What is a mind that is forgiven? Concession. It's a still mind at peace with self, the recognition of self as the extension of God. A mind with unforgiven thoughts. Well, all these things are popping up, repeating, repeating, repeating. Decisions to make, uh, self-worthy issues. What must I do? Where must I go? What must I wear? Who's going to see me? Who's going to validate me? Who's going to hear me? What must I say? Who must I share with? Who? It's me, me, me. What is a forgiven mind? It's a forgotten mind. It's forgotten the dream. So what's going to come up when there's nothing to come up because you've forgotten all the illusionary constructs? What comes up? More of what is. And what is? Eternal silence. Eternal abidance of silence, spirit, and God as one. And there's every reason to feel confident that we will succeed today, right here and right now. Because you already have succeeded, Holy Son of God. You've already awoken in God. Forgive having dreamt. That's it. That's all it is. It is the will of our source. It is the will of God. What what else do you want? My real thoughts are in my awareness. Mine for now. You'll get into awareness. You'd like to find them. You are that. They're silent. They're still. And so go past all unreal thoughts. You see, Advita Vendanta, direct path. Here it is. Don't pay attention. Let them pass. Don't hang on to them. Don't engage them. Under all the senseless thoughts and mad ideas with which you have cluttered up your mind, awareness, are the thoughts that you thought with God in the beginning. And what did you think with God in the beginning? The very thing you think with God in the end, because there's no beginning, there's no end in God. It's the eternal now. What did you think with God? The extension of life. What did you think with God? You thought nothing. You are everything. There's nothing to think when everything is what you are. And what is everything? The light, the love, the essence, the spirit of God. And it's always here in your awareness, in your what you think is mind. So at this stage of the course, as we're transgressing from duality, non-duality, it's still using the idea of mind as if you have your own mind. You don't have a mind. You've never had a mind. Get out of your mind. Everything you have thought since the beginning of time, illusion, big bang, will change, will dissolve. But the foundation, capital F, the essence, the strata, the screen on which it rests is wholly changeless. It is this foundation (coughs) to which this entire course is directed. Here is your mind joined with the mind of God. So for your mind to join the mind of God, your mind dissolves. There's only the God's mind. (coughs) Excuse me. Here are your thoughts, one with his, because there's only his thoughts. And you are one of his thoughts. Which is thought, the extension of his love. For this kind of practice, only one thing is necessary. Silent stillness. Approach it as you would an altar on a Sunday. Nomini Patros, Filitu, Spiritu, Santi, Amen. Just be quiet. Shh. Because God is in heaven. Where is heaven right here, right now? Where are you in heaven right here, right now? You're in God. You've never left. You, Father and Son, are one. For such is the place you are trying to reach, silent stillness. You will probably be unable to yet to realize how high, how high you are trying to go. High is a bit of a play in words. It's here now. There's nowhere to go. Yet even the little understanding you have already gained teaches for God. You should be able to remind yourself this is no idle game, but an exercise in your essence, holiness. Holiness is essence. And an attempt to reach the kingdom of heaven, which is what you are. You are the kingdom which God extended and which in which God abides as spirit. You are the kingdom of God. You are the kingdom. The sun is the kingdom. The extension is the kingdom. The kingdom is within you. God is within you. Sink into your heart. Abide in the kingdom. Abide as yourself. 
where God meets you and you recognize that is all there is. Try to remember how important it is to understand the holiness, the essence of the essence, the mind that thinks with God, why it's an extension essence. Appreciate your mind's holiness because your mind's holiness is the shared essence and it's clear of thought, emotion, sensation, feelings, thoughts, emotions, sensations, feelings are what? Obstacles to peace, egoic obstacles to peace, diversion. When there's silent stillness, there's no thought. There's no thought, there's no sensation. There's no sensation, there's no feeling. If there's no feeling, there's no emotion. Empaths. Zero emotion, silent stillness is God. Appreciate the silent stillness. Stand aside however briefly, be still and know I am. From all thoughts that are unworthy of him, whose host you are, you are host to God but you've played in your little dream host to the ego and thank him for the thoughts he is thinking with you because the thoughts he's thinking with you is that which abides in silent storms. Be still and know I am. The I am in you is God, is spirit, is eternal, is perfect. Lesson 46, the Valentino Rossi lesson. God is the love in which I forgive. Beautiful. God is the love. Love is the absence of body. Love is that which I am. It's the essence. It's the screen. And it's on the screen that I forgive. Why do I forgive? It's the recognition of what I am through the experience of what I'm not. And I realize everything happened to me had to happen for me in order for me to, darkness, there must be a better way. Go search. Go be still. And you started the practice, meditation, whatever you started to do. The gift is the love, which has given you the adversity, which has made you, forced you, forced you to go find a better way. Whilst you would have just been in fantasy holiday for the rest of your eternal life, wondering why it was never going to get any better. And no matter how magical it was, something shit would still happen. Why? Because as the mind forgets, as the mind takes its attention away from something, it disintegrates, rusts, dies. God is the love in which I forgive. And that's why when, when you as a body-mind hold nothing for the ego to play with, it leaves you alone and you seem to dissolve or die. Oh, God, so, so then I mustn't awaken because I'm going to die. No, you must. Because when you awaken to self and you offer this self, this appearance to the memory of God, God's Holy Spirit in you, it then he says, okay, great. I've got this little, this little piece in, in, in the game. Love ego, the little love ego in the game that still appears as an ego. Love ego, Lego, little Lego piece in the game. Woo. So we'll use this little Lego piece and we'll speak through it and share the awakening with all. But if it's not going to awaken to self, what's the purpose of having it there? <laughs> so when you awaken to self, which means the self awakens and the idea dissolves, awakening to self is the separate body mind identity dissolves and the essence of self is here. What is there to do? It's the recognition that everything I thought I needed to forgive is what's brought me to this self awareness. God does not forgive because he has never condemned. And there must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary, which means you condemned what? yourself and fractured yourself so that you didn't have to hold yourself in appearance con condemnation. You could project it out into the world and then attack. It. And what did it do? It backfired on you because they attacked you. And as they, your outer projections of your self-hatred, they attacked you and then made you feel unworthy. It backfired. It bit you in your spiritual bum. <laughs> so there you are stuck. Self-worth. What an absurd concept. I'm not good enough. What an absurd concept. Someone told me last week, oh, I don't like cats. I hate cats. Ten minutes prior, he told me how much he loves God and loves God creation. So I just played with him. I said, so tell God that. Tell God that you don't like the cats God made. Onward, Christian soldiers. How can you hate cats? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Do you love lions? Oh, I love lions. Leopards, love leopards. Cheetahs, oh, I love 
cheetahs? Do you love domestic cats? No, I hate, hate cats. It's just a miniature version of a lion that won't eat you. <laughs> Forgiveness, forgiving, for giving is receiving. Forgiveness is the great need of this illusion. But that is because it's a world of illusions. So it's the appearance of illusions. Illusion is an, Forgiveness is an illusion itself. But it's the only illusion that dissolves all illusions. Those who forgive are thus releasing themselves from illusions. You're releasing yourself from illusions. You learned that. And like Not forgiving is like swallowing poison, hoping the other person's going to die. If you swallow poison, you die. Unforgiven po thoughts are poison in you. So you release so that you may be released. God is the love in which you are released. Why do you want to hold those people? Up? So when those thoughts come up, those repetitive thoughts, uh, he cheated, he lied, he hurt me, abused me, told me I wasn't good enough, whether it was daddy or mommy or boyfriend or husband or girlfriend or wife or mother, whatever. When those thoughts come up, they poison. Why do you pay any attention? Do they make you feel good? If a stranger came and robbed you of your joy, would you consider him friend? Or would you tell him to go Argo himself? So why do you do that with your thoughts? Why do you entertain those thieves that come and steal your joy? Why do you give them any attention? Who, who, I'm stressing. Why? Stop it. Why? Because you want something to talk about. You're, you're attached. You're codependent on the stress. You love it because it makes you feel something. You're an empath. You need to feel something to believe you're an illusionary alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. You're not alive. You're life. You're the stillness of life that travels through everything. Those who forgive are thus releasing themselves from illusions because the self that needs to forgive doesn't exist. An illusion dissolves. And what is left? The essence. While those who withhold forgiveness are binding themselves to the illusion. As you condemn only yourself because it's all you. Fractures of yourself, holy son of God dreaming. Everything you see in the universe is in your dreaming mind. As you forgive it, you forgive yourself for having dreamt it. And you awaken to the essence which is the true self. Yet although God does not forgive, his love nevertheless is the basis of forgiveness. Why? It's the corrective principle. Is that that brings you back and make you realize... There's nothing to forgive. But first you have to practice forgiveness to get to the point of realizing there's nothing to forgive. Fear condemns, love forgives, love corrects, love brings it back to that which is. Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has appeared to produce, returning the mind, the observation of yourself to the awareness, there it is, of God, the awareness of the awareness, which is God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation because forgiveness is an echo for that which is the love of God. Forgiveness is a concessionary echo for that which is true. It, mean, it is the means by which illusions disappear. Forgiveness is the light of awareness coming through and dissolving the body-mind filters of separation. Be that. Search your mind. Abide. Direct path. Advita Vendanta, path of Gyani, abide, silent stillness. Search your mind for those people that, that have pissed you off, people that you haven't forgiven, whether it was something in the car park today or in the lift or at the office or your mother, your father, your boyfriend, your husband, your daughter, your whatever. Forgive and release yourself from it because the reason all the issues pitch up in your life to disturb you is because the unforgiven thoughts are being projected out and coming as people, places, things, and events appearing to you to disturb you. You're disturbing you because of your lack of unforgiveness. Let go, let God. To forgive is to forget. A mind that has forgiven everything, has forgotten the illusion, so then there's nothing more to forgive. And only itself as the loving extension of God to remember. God is the love with which I forgive you. Course in Miracles students and teachers. So put yourself in that first position. I, the dreamer, forgive my character, including this localization, because I created these characters. I made these characters in my dream in order to figure out what I was. I also made them in vengeance because I was angry, because I imagined what created me, punished me, and set me outside, kicked me out of the Garden of Eden. 
Even though I couldn't remember the Garden of Eden, heaven. I couldn't remember because I'm in darkness. I can't remember shit. I can't remember myself. I have no idea what I am. How am I going to remember God? So I imagine a God. And I imagine that that God shoved me out, kicked me on my Uranus, out of my heavenly place. And now I want to blame that thing I've imagined created me. But I can't remember it. So I make up the story of a vengeful God. When in essence... I chose to fall asleep and forget my father, forget my source. I made up the story. I made up the story of vengeance, sin, fear, and guilt. I, the dreaming mind that is localized, appears as Lou, appears as you, appears as all of us. I am a mirror of you. You are a mirror of me. We are the self-same essence. The I in me is the I in you. Awakening to self. God is the love in which I, little me, forgive my little self. And when I, little me, forgives my little self, what happens? The little self and the little I dissolve. And what is left? The I am. And what happens to the I am? It realizes self is the extension of the eternal extension of God's love. And realizes God is the love with which I love God. God is the love with which I love myself. Even this body-mind illusion. Because through this body-mind illusion, I've awoken to the self. God is the love in which I am blessed as that which is the blessing of God. God is the love with which I love God. I've added that. God is the love with which I love thee because God is love. I don't love you. I recognize, I love recognizes you as love, the self-same essence as the self-same essence is God. The very essence of you, your very essence and my essence and God's essence is identical. <laughs> You cannot be guilty. You cannot be unworthy. You can't be anything because you are a son of God, a localized character in the son of God's dreaming mind. You have already been forgiven because this never happened and God cannot hold you in judgment because it doesn't happen. You know, if, if your kid was sleeping on his bed and he was dreaming up a horrible movie where he robbed a bank and killed three puppies, when he woke up out of, out of the dream, would you punish him and not give him dinner and send him straight back to his room? Of course not. It was a dream. And that's the same way God looks at it. Hey, little kid, you fell asleep and you wanted to imagine what, what, what it would be like if it wasn't always bliss. Well, you've had it. How was that? Not so nice. Come sit down and let's have some nice Portuguese chicken. Because God is Portuguese, of course. According to my mother, everything from the beginning, everything was invented by the Portuguese. So God must be Portuguese. No fear is possible. The Greeks are now arguing. The Italians are now upset. And the Spanish are about to send an inquisition. God is Portuguese. No fear is possible in the mind beloved of God. There is no need to attack because love has forgiven me. I am love. There's nothing to forgive. There's nothing to forgive. But while I think I have things to forgive, then let's practice the forgiveness. Use the Ho'oponopono prayer. That's the most beautiful way to do it. Abide and see everything and as an extension of you and bless it. You want to forgive? Bless it. Be grateful what, whatever happened, whatever trauma, whatever abuse, the narcissist, the whatever, forgive and bless them. For had they not existed in your dreaming peripheral mind, you wouldn't know you were dreaming. And through the suffering and adversity, you've sought another way and realized self. God is the love in which we forgive because the essence returns everything to love. In lesson 47, Love, strength, light, same thing. God is the strength in which I trust. And, and, and get into this. This essence, when you abide in silent stillness and everything stands still, offer that as a blessing to the self and to all its self-illusion creation. Offer it to all of it. Recognize life, light, is strength, is God. And that's all we can trust in because everything else is an illusion. If you are trusting in your own strength, your own abilities, your own skills, you have every reason to be apprehensive, anxious, and fearful. What can you predict? Oh, here we go. Who? How many times must I say this? The future is not your concern. It's God's. But let's go and see the psychic, the clairvoyant. Let's draw the cards. Ooh, what's the future hold? Ooh, there's a man. There's always a fucking man somewhere. It's called mankind. There's always a man. Or there's a woman. And there's always a woman because it's man, woman, kind is the same thing. Whoa, man. 
Ooh, happiness in another person. Ooh, I'm going to get the job. Ooh, psychic people. How many clairvoyants have you seen that live in joyous abundance? Come on, name them. Clairvoyants that live in joyous abundance. At peace with self. Just offering lovingly. Joyous abundance. How many clairvoyants? How many psychics? How many truly healed clairvoyants have you met in your life? met one and she doesn't want anything to do with it but it's connected because it realizes the love of god what could you predict and control and let's ask this question do you imagine it and then it happens because you believe your imagination your ego oh look how psychic it is i mad oh i saw it now you imagined it and then it happened because you gave it belief and if the psychic or the clairvoyant says you oh you're going to go there and meet a man and you do you're going to be looking out for it and you're going to Self-fulfill, your prophecy of illusion. What is there in you that can be counted on? What, is, what have you ever done that has is, that is lasted? What joy have you ever achieved that has remained with you? Other than the knowing of the self, which is the extension of God's love. What is in you that can be counted on? Only God. What would give you the ability to be aware of all the facets of any problem? Hang a second, this is a paradox. How can I be aware of problems if I'm aware? There are no problems. There's only problems if I'm not aware. I move into the various levels of consciousness, human consciousness. The highest level of human consciousness I get into is conscious of awareness, conscious awareness. But at some stage, conscious awareness dissolves and there's just awareness of awareness itself, as itself. So what could give you the ability to be aware of all the facets of any problem and to resolve them in such a way that only good can come of it? Well, if you're seeing a problem, then you're out. Then you're already trapped in illusion. So if you see the problem, you are the problem because the problem is an outer projection of an inner condition. When you're in silent stillness, there's no problems. Why? There's no projection. There's no thought. What is there in you that gives rise, gives, gives you the recognition of the right solution and the guarantee that will be accomplished? Silent stillness and gratitude. That's all. Give your canvas that you're about to paint your next fantasy. Give your blank canvas back to God. And abide in silent stillness. And give it with gratitude. Be still and know I am. Let go, let God. God, here's the canvas of my life. I will no longer paint another fantasy on it. Of yourself, you can do none of these things. Because first of all, this separate self doesn't exist. And things don't exist. So doing things is just an illusion appearing to do illusions. To believe that you can is to put your, your trust where trust is unwarranted in illusions and to justify fear, illusions, anxiety, illusions, depression, illusions, anger, and sorrow, illusions. Who can put his faith in weakness and feel safe? And that's what we've done our whole lives. Who can put his faith in strength and feel weak? When you put your, when you put your faith in the one and only power, the most powerful power, which is the only power that ever is, which is God. You become part of that because you are a part of that. You're the extension of God's power. You're the extension of God's love. Love, which is the strongest force in the universe. The only strong. It's the only because therefore it's the strongest. I won the race when I was alone because there's only one me to run. No matter how far or how fast I had to go, I still won. It was only me. There's only one strength. There's only one power. It's the most powerful power in the universe. Why? Because it's the only power. God. God is your safety in every circumstance. His voice speaks for him. His voice, essence, his extension, speaks for him in all situations and every aspect of all situations. Return to silent stillness. Ooh, I don't know what to do tomorrow. Should I go here or should I go? If I go, there will be trouble. If I stay, it will be double. Well, then let me just abide and offer it over. Should I stay? Should I go? Let me just be. And whatever comes up is whatever comes up. Oh, but I want to do this because that's going to be the better one. Has that always worked out? How's that worked out for you so far in your life? How, how well has it worked out? You decided what was best for you. You decided the route to take. You decided where to go, where to stay. How's that worked out for you? Ever had a perfect holiday where everything went perfect? 
Yes, you had it. You abided in it. You were there in eternity. And then you decided, no, you didn't want it anymore. You could do better, you thought. You dreamt up this elaborate disaster. <laughs> How's that working out for us so well, so far? How's this elaborate disaster working out? Chaos, madness. Let go, let go. His voice speaks for you, for him, you, for your essence. In every situation, telling you exactly what to do to call upon his strength and his protection. And what should you do to call upon God's strength and protection? Let go, let God be silent, be still, abide. There are no expectations, okay, when you abide in silent storms. None. And there are no exceptions because God has no expectation. And the voice, the voice, the V, the essence, the energy, the you, the self, the Christ, which speaks for him thinks as he does. And how does God think? Love extension. Today we will try to reach past our own weaknesses, our own thought, illusion, perception, projection to the source of real strength. Source of real strength. Love, the only strength. God is the strength in which I trust. Trust, abide. How often do you feel that sense? You get that sensation. You have a decision to make. You get that sensation. Trust God. And then the old self kicks in. And so very often at a certain level in your awakening, awakening, you're at a higher consciousness. Let's imagine a five-story building. You're at the fourth level conscious awareness. But you're so used to being on the ground floor of ego consciousness that when your awareness comes in, what do you do? You turn all the way down to the ground floor and you get stuck and you behave from the ground floor. Right. And realize there's always another level. And that level dissolves as you get to the fifth floor and there's no more floors. And that's just the whole building dissolves. And you are that in which all buildings existed. Try to slip past all concerns, abide in silent stillness, to your own sense of inadequacy. I'm not good enough. How does that serve you? doesn't let it go. It is not by trusting yourself that you will gain confidence. But the strength of God, the Christ in you, is successful in all things. Because there's no thing. It's always perfectly successful. In eternity, the recognition of your own frailty as a body-mind is a necessary step. I am not this. I am not this. I am not this. The neti neti. In the correction of your errors, your perceptions, your ideas about yourself. But it is hardly sufficient. It is hardly a sufficient one in giving you the confidence which you need and to which you are entitled. So the neti neti, I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this, brings you to I must therefore be. And as you forgive, I'm not this, I'm not that. Forgiven thoughts bring you into silent stillness. When there's nothing more to forgive, what's left? Silent stillness. So you must also gain an awareness. Here it is. Throughout this course is the word awareness. Very few teachers talk about awareness. That confidence in you, in you, in your real strength, is confidence and awareness being awareness itself, is fully justified in every respect, in every and all circumstances. Why? Because awareness is the essence of God, the essence extension of the Son, which is the essence extension of God. Awareness is the essence of God. Awareness is God. And NB in the next one. In the latter phase of the practice period, reach down into your mind. You reach down into your mind, into a place of real safety. Sink, silent stillness. Sink into the silent stillness of the heart temple, symbolic. Sink. Go into the void, which is devoid of nothing and filled with everything, which is God, which is the kingdom, which is in what God abides. It's where you abide as the extension of God. You are the kingdom in which God abides. You will recognize that you have reached it if you feel a deep sense, a, a feel a sense of deep peace. However, briefly, the more you abide, the all pervading it becomes. It extends because you are in permanent extension. It go all through trivial things. Don't attach to thoughts. Reach down below the, the surface, below the screen, until you realize the kingdom is the screen. And you are the screen in which God abides. And God is the screen in which you abide. There is a place in you 
where there is perfect peace, for it is the real you, perfect peace. There is a place in you where nothing is impossible, or there is no thing for it to be possible. It's only itself eternally. There is a place in you where the strength of God abides, for you are that which is the eternal strength, the eternal extension of love, the eternal extension of God's love. Be that knowingly. Remember that the peace, that peace of God, the joy of God is your right for you are it because you are giving your trust to the strength of God, which you are. You are the strength in which God extends itself because you are the extension of his strength. You are the light of God. In lesson 48, there is nothing to fear, false evidence appearing real. There's nothing to fear because it's all false. The idea for today simply states a fact. It's not a fact to those who believe in illusions, but illusions are not facts. But they want us to be facts. People want the, they want the truth, but I want to be this. I want the truth, but I want to know there's a spirit world and there's a God and there's angels. And if you really want the truth, empty the mind and find the silent, silent stillness that reminds you what you are. So people want illusions, but they also want to know God. When you know God, illusions dissolve, and there's no memory of you ever having existed. In truth, there is nothing to fear. It is very easy to recognize this, but it is very difficult to recognize it for those who want illusions to be true. They want illusions to be true, and they want to know God. I want the truth. You're not ready for the truth. Why are you not, why are you not ready for the truth? Because you're not willing to dissolve all memory of yourself. I've said before, our greatest fear is not the fear of death. It's a afterlife. Our greatest fear is there's you've never existed and there is no afterlife. You are life itself. You want the facts? Well, false appearances cannot threaten you. You want the truth? True reality undoes hell, undoes this hell. And what happens? There's no memory of this having ever having existed. There's no memory of you or your spouse, or your mommy, or your daddy, or your doggy, or your horsey. There's no memory of any of this. There's no universe. There's just, it was a little glimpse, beep, beep, little, and the light just keeps extending. And it would never remember that this has ever existed. You've never existed. You don't exist. The essence of you exists. The essence of you, which is your true self, the true self, which is your Christ self, the true Christ self, which is the son of God's self, the son of God's self, which is the extension of God's love. That exists. That's all that exists. And that is the power and the glory of God. What else do you want to know? It is particularly important that you use the idea immediately. Should anything disturb your peace of mind, don't give it attention. As Jesus used to say, get thee behind me, Satan. It wasn't a woman standing around there in her little skimpy red dress with horns on and a tail, a little pitchfork. Didn't say to Sheila, hey, get you behind me. Satan. Satan, Satan. What are you wearing under that little red dress? He didn't say that. There was no Satan. There was no thing. And by the way, who recorded it? He was just saying to his thoughts, stop it. Shh, be quiet. Oh, I'm the son of God. Why don't I just change all this? Why don't I just manifest daisies and roses and horses and chariots and and manna from heaven. No, I'm going to go through the crucifixion. I'm going to demonstrate that 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 this isn't true. That life is immortal. But you can, the Son of God, send down your angels. Let's get the bejesus out of them with angels and chariots and fire. Shh! Stop it! Stop it! Thoughts! Stop it! Stop it! Get behind me, thoughts! Get behind me, Satan! Satan, the thought, thought to Satan. That's it. The presence of fear is a sure sign that you are trusting in your own strength. So if you're worrying, it's fear. Worry and fear, past repeating itself in ways that you didn't like, relived now, projected into the future. What's going to happen? What you resist persists. The awareness that there is nothing to fear shows that somewhere in your mind, in your awareness, though not necessarily in the place you recognize it yet, silent stillness within, you have remembered God, and you will never forget because the essence of you is the eternal extension of him. How can it be forgotten when you are it? And so then we move on to lesson 49. And God's voice speaks throughout, 
to me throughout the day. The day. But if you hear a voice that says, this is God or Jesus or Ramana or, you know, Zork from Zook and the Pallades, hey, go take those little pills, white jacket, pat it in the back, pat itself. They feed you jello through the little, little hole in the wall. There's something wrong with you. You're suffering from a psychosis. You've multiple projected yourself, and now there's little selves talking to you, and they seem to be real. And if they're wearing dark hats and sunglasses and FBI coats, then they're definitely in your head. Okay? No one's chasing you. No one wants to kill you. You don't exist. God's voice, his essence, speaks to you throughout the day, throughout eternity. Not just the day. Every other, in eternity. Why? Because God's voice is his essence. And his essence is his light. And his light is his power. And his power is his extension. And his extension is you. Holy Son of God. How can he not speak through you, through you all day long? But he doesn't speak with a voice. There's no communication. Because if there's only one, what does it communicate with? Itself knows itself as all there is. No duality in God. The voice is the essence. It knows itself. But in the, in, in the dreaming mind, in the dream of the essence, is this illusion. When the dream ends, the essence returns knowingly to its Essentry, essentry self and extends itself. It is quite possible to listen to God's voice throughout the day. Why? Because you never left without interrupting your regular activities. And what we want to do is we want to escape the world, detach from the world, hide, get off the grid, live in a little cabin, grow a beard, chop wood, fetch water, have a cat. Detach. I don't want any. Switch off the TV. Social media is bad. How would you be listening to this if social media is bad? Social media is bad when you're posting selfies of yourself in your little bikini, trying to get attention and recognition. And you look how beautiful I am. And I've just Botoxed my face and collagened my bum. Uh -huh. How's that helping you? Because someone's still going to find criticism and then they're going to objectify you. You don't like to be objectified. So why are you doing it? Abide in silent stillness. Don't detach. Don't detach. Don't push away. Don't try and hide. Don't detach. Don't control. Don't try and own it. Just let go. Like a lucid dream. And recognize it's all you. Emotions come. They're happy. Celebrate. Emotions come. They're sad. Celebrate. I'm aware that this illusion, this emotion of, of sadness is not myself. I'm aware. Gratitude for the sad emotion. Celebrate because I am that. And how can and what happens to you when you're celebrating? You're in gratitude. Celebration is gratitude. What happens to the sadness dissolves and the joy returns and abides. A negative thought comes. Watch. Gratitude for the negative thought. It's not real. And the joy returns. And the more you practice, the more the joy abides. And once everything's forgiven, there's nothing to attack. There's nothing to disturb your silent stillness, awareness of self, aware of being awareness itself. The part of your mind in which truth abides is in constant communication with God because it's the constant truth of God. Whether you are aware of it or not, your essence is God's eternal essence shared. It is the other part of your mind, the body-mind identity that functions in this world because the world is in its body-mind identity. And obey its world's law, obeys the laws of your dreaming mind, of limitations. Laws are limitations. When you are free, what law is there? Because you are freedom itself. It is this part that is constantly distracted, disorganized, and highly uncertain. And we projected that part outside us and called it Satan. And she's been beating us up for 2,000 years. The part that is listening to the voice for God is calm, always at rest and wholly certain. And remember, there's not a voice. It's a knowing. God's never said a single word. That's illusion. That's old biblical con constructs. And therefore it was the word. And the word was God. And the word was made manifest. That's all happening in the dream. God's word is silent. Can't explain God. There's no words. And that is the only part of your mind that is truly real, is the only part that exists is the silent stillness. The other part is wild, wild illusions, frantic, distraught, 
without any reality of any kind. Today, we try not to listen to it. So whenever thoughts come, return to the silent stillness. Try to identify with the part of your mind. That's your real identity, where stillness and peace reign forever. There it is, silent stillness. And in the stillness is peace. Try to hear God's voice calling to you lovingly, for it is love itself. Reminding you that God, your creator, has not forgotten you, the extension of itself. Hear God's voice reminding you of him and your capital S self, which is the extension of God. We will approach this happy and holiest of thoughts with confidence, abidance, knowing that in doing so, we are joining our will with the will of God. I will to will thy will. Amen. What's God's will? That we return knowingly to that self, which is the extension of himself. He wants you to hear his voice, know your essence, know your self-same essence. Hear his voice is to know thyself. He gave it to you to be heard. No, not in with ears, because ears don't exist. This body doesn't exist. So what is there to hear when that doesn't real? What is true hearing? It's the, it's the, it's the song of the heart. It's the knowing, the eternal knowing that has never changed. Listen in deep silence and be very still and open your mind. Silent stillness. Be still and know I am. Go past all the raucous shrieks and sick, sick imaginings, your imagination, your thoughts popping up, trying to attract you, trying to distract you, trying to grab your attention from the knowing, from the silent stillness. The clouds that cover the screen the clouds that cover the blue sky of awareness and obscure your eternal link with that which is God, that which is you as the extension of God. Sink into the peace, sink silence that waits for you beyond the frantic, righteous thoughts and sights and sounds of this insane world. You do not live yet. The world lives in your thoughts. We are trying to reach your real home where you've never left. We're trying to awaken the dreamer. We are trying to reach the place where, you're, where, where you are truly welcome and always have been. We are trying to reach God where we've never left. Realize that you are inviting God's voice to speak to you so that you can be yourself knowing what is God's voice to you. It uses your own thoughts and words and reminds you what you are until you reach that recognition that this does not exist. And all that exists is the essence of the I am. And the I am in me is the I am in all because we are the I am in the Christ I am. The Christ, the dreaming son of God, I am. The great I am. The only I am, which is the ever extending essence, extension of God. I and my father are one. Why? Because I am the extension of my father's love. I am the kingdom in which my father abides. My father is the kingdom in which I abide. I am. Be still and know. I am God. Thank you. Um, I urge you that we start tomorrow. You start in revision, lesson 51, and there'll be five little lessons. And read the summaries. Don't keep going back to the lessons. Stay on the summaries only. And let it filter through you. And if you read it, it'll read like a story and it'll show you the seamless, the seamless awakening sequence that appears to come in stages and phases. But it's a seamless sequence of awakening. You fell asleep. Do you remember falling asleep and dreaming? No, you don't remember that sequence, do you? Do you remember the sequence of when you awake every morning? No, it's a seamless sequence of awakening. And the course is a manual, which sort of disguises the step-by-step -step seamlessness of yourself awakening to itself as that which is the Christ, the extension of God's love, that which you are and I have always been. God is the love with which I forgive. God is the love with which I love thee. God is the power, the strength, the courage, which reminds me that I am the I am, the ever-extending love of God. Namaste. Blessings. Have a great week ahead, and I'll see you next week Sunday. Thank you for joining me.